you had the chance to get rid of some of your worst nightmares, what would they be? My guest is here tonight to persuade me to banish the items on his list into room 101. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome Ricky Gervais? <laughs> Well suited up, sir. Hello. Take a seat. Cheers. Well, Ricky, thanks for being on Room 101. Um, My pleasure. Are you a man who has a short fuse? If you don't mind me asking. <laughs> Too easy. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit impatient, which you'll probably um, you'll see uh, as uh, my things come out. Did you? Did you? There's did another one. <laughs> Did you have did you have trouble? Um, I was just desperate to avoid one now. Did, yeah. you, did you have trouble coming up with? Um, <laughs> how long did it take you to come up with various ideas for, for things that could go into room one hundred and one? Well, I had to lose about fifteen. Let's put it that did way. Did you? <laughs> so uh, no, it was easy. Okay, all right. Well, let's have a, let's have a look at your first one. Um, what exactly is this? It's it's babies in restaurants. <laughs> babies in restaurants. Yeah. Can you give yeah. us an idea of what that is. This illustrates baby in restaurants. <laughs> Do you want to have a go? If only you could do that. <laughs> it's quite good fun. End. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's nothing wrong with them, of course. Yeah. You know, it's toddlers mainly. Yeah. Uh, it's like a one-year-old, and what they do for a living is they make noises and they smell and they bang the spoon and they dribble and they cough up puree. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's what they do. That's yeah. their job, right? Now. I blame the parents. It's sort of like new age 30 somethings with their baby, and they're all called Zach and Molly. And it's like, oh God, Eat, feed it at home. Do you know what I mean? Why take them there? It's not like their parents are going to get there and they're going to see this mess going all over the place, annoying me. You know what I mean? Mm. I've paid £10. I've got a bit of money now, I'd like to splash out. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so you're talking Angus Steakhouse now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, posh, really posh. <laughs> and, and to see that, it, it, it's sort of the arrogance of the parents, that they're used to it and they love it, they go, oh, look at him covered in custard and it's sweet. No, it's not, it's horrible. I'm, so a, bit, I'm, I'm a little bit squeamish, so anything, anything dribbly or yeah. vomity yeah. or just anything like that makes, makes me gag. Yeah, yeah. I, they love it, but I don't want to see it, do you know what I mean? Well, I think, you know, I, I have a lot of sympathy with this. I think giving kids the taste of restaurants early on gives them sort of like ideas above their station. So they end up really behaving like this. I think it's a totally outrageous behaviour for a young child. I'm cooking chicken breast with blue cheese stuffing, oh. Brussels sprouts with walnuts and bacon, and potato fans, followed by a bittersweet chocolate tart with amaretto cream with nut praline and seasonal berries. Is Get that... to your room. <laughs> <laughs> well, Never think... speak like that to me again. Absolutely. <laughs> so, is this a sort of like a middle class thing you think that, you, that you're talking about? This sums up the sort of arrogance yeah. of sort of like these new age people. Um, it's those people that just think any, anything's fine because it's sort of like natural. Yes. I mean, um, a friend of mine moved away to the sticks, and um, on their first weekend there, the next door neighbour came round, right? Dungaree sandals, mm -hmm. long grey hair, cut it, right? And shave your legs, right? And um, she said, oh, I'm uh, from next door, I've made you a rice pudding, right? And this mm. is, I swear, right? Uh, you know, um, Jack, we're, we're bottle feeding him now, but I had a lot of excess milk, so I made you this rice pudding. <laughs> right? <laughs> and there wasn't I... any jam in there, was there? No. <laughs> Oh. And I said to my friend, I said, what did you say? She went, well, I just took it and I sort of threw it away when they left and handed about the dish. And that wasn't enough for me. I no. wanted them to know that this was up. Not, I was, right, take this and never darken my door with your, <laughs> you know I mean, your dirty, leaky pillows again. Get out. <laughs> Get back to your cottage. Take your rural 16th century ways back where yeah, they came exactly. from. Yeah, and exactly. And this is, this is meant to be, it's OK because it's natural. Mm. You know what I mean? That's not necessarily right, though, no, is it? No, really. No, you'd have to cut this bit. But yeah. what I said, <laughs> what I said, you'd have to cut this bit. I said, well, send around my place, I'll make her a spunk sandwich. <laughs> so... So... Brown bread, white bread... Doesn't matter. Does it spread straight from the fridge? 
So, well, if you were French or Italian, of course... Um... No, the French. Don't get me started on the French. Well, uh, I've, I've, I've they, brought up the French. They will eat anything, won't they? Well, I'm... I mean, over here, you know, My Little Pony's a toy. Over there, it's, it's the star. Exactly. <laughs> the... <laughs> Horses, snails, yeah. frogs. Yeah. I've been to France a couple of times, and as far as I can make out, there's only one thing the French won't eat. Yeah. Clarets. Really? Um... <laughs> Well, maybe kids' menus are to blame for enticing kids into the restaurants. We've got this is a genuine one here. On the back here is a Mr. Men theme running through. This is genuine things you can get in a restaurant. There's a Little Miss Lucky's Golden Chicken Treats, right? <laughs> uh, Mr. Tickles One Two Three. I don't know what that is. You didn't get that. That's not out of a telephone box, is it? That? I don't think so. No. One some... crispy potato, new in town. No, I don't think so. <laughs> um, Mr. Mischief's mushrooms. Oh, you might be right, actually. <laughs> Well, Mr. Bounce's beef lasagna, I think you Definitely. are right. Definitely. It's, it's, you know, that's what's enticing the kids in. Maybe they're sort of thinking, oh, that sounds lovely. Well, if I go into a restaurant and there's that, when you walk in, about nine high chairs... Yeah. I go, are you expecting the cast of Time Bandits? Mm. <laughs> if not, I'm leaving. Yeah. Um, I think it's definitely going in because yes. um, it's a terrible waste of a babysitter. Yeah. You've got a babysitter in and then there's more kids when you go out. Exactly. So um, I, there's no reason would to keep children in restaurants out of Room 101. Bye-bye. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> OK, let's have a look at the next one here. This is the White Rabbit for Alice in Wonderland. What does this represent for you? This is children with toys. No. Um... <laughs> This is actually, um, lateness. It, it really, really winds me up. And I've sort of been obsessed with it from an early age. I could never be late. And because I'm never late, I, I'm, I can't stand it when someone else is late. Uh, also, I get there early, so when they're ten minutes late, I've been there twenty minutes, and, <laughs> and they think I'm just mental. And I'm, just, I'm, I'm so annoyed. There's no excuse. I, I, it's sort of like, a, oh, God, why are you late? Oh, I just oh, set off late. <laughs> yeah, you did. Right? Or, oh, I overslept. I, I don't care. I, oh, traffic was murder. Well, there's always traffic. Do you know what I mean? Well, how do you usually get her abseil? It's no, there's, there's no excuse good enough. I'm so, I mean... You say you're never late, but you, you must have been late at some point for something, somewhere. I can't remember. Really? Yeah. I think I was a week premature. <laughs> <laughs> There's no no excuse will do. So okay, I, I, was, I was I was shot maybe. I was hit by a car. Not even family bereavement because I go well you knew she was ill. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Just she's been ill for ages. Plan ahead. Uh, why were you late by the way? We meant to start start at half seven. Yeah. I was a little bit annoyed. <laughs> well, <you're really>? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't You're care. You're a big star. <laughs> <laughs> so, how long are you prepared to wait for somebody to turn up? I want to punish them. I, I want something... I want some sort of forfeit. Yeah. Like, if I, I say, I see you at eight, and you get £100, and I just take £5 back every minute they're late. Something like that, do you know what I mean? Well, maybe you should give them some poison, and then you have the antidote. <laughs> and so you've got to be there exactly. by eight o'clock, because by five past eight, you'll be dead. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Exactly. Or radio-controlled shoes, <laughs> which you have. So you suddenly yeah. sort of, like, put them up to 15 miles an hour. Yeah. I, think, I think it's because I want to be in control, maybe. I just want to be in charge. And it I does can't sound believe like anyone it's... wouldn't want to rush to see me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is about control, We're meeting I Ricky. Think. We're going to get there half hour early. Yeah. Do you think it's insulting, it's insult. then? Yeah. Yeah, it is, yeah. How could they have anything better to do than meet me <laughs> in a grotty pub? For a point. So when you meet people, when you say, oh, I'll meet you at 8 o'clock, do you meet, you know, do you meet outside a cinema or do you meet in a restaurant or do you think, well, if I'm going to be late, I mean, does it... It depends what we're doing. If we're eating, it's a restaurant. If we're seeing a film, it's a cinema. <laughs> <laughs> that would have, that would work. <laughs> but what I was going to get to was, does it determine where you're going to meet them? If you think, well, if they're going to be late, I'm not going to be standing outside yeah, in the rain. Definitely. So I'm going to, I will meet them in the pub before yeah, I go to the yeah, cinema. Yeah, or if I don't mind if I'm meeting a lot of people and I'm already with friends, but it's when you're meeting... So, you know, and I won't go in a pub by myself, either. Cos I don't... I, I look like a loser. You know what I mean? <laughs> no one sit there by myself. People got no match. Shut up, they're late, all right? So I, what I do is I, I look, make sure they're there. If they're not, I walk round and round the block. <laughs> 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 what about, um... If you were going to get married, what about the bride turning up late? Is that's a tradition, isn't it? If you were sort of standing at the altar and you, you were getting married, how long would you give the bride before you thought, oh, I'm just, this isn't worth it, it's not I'd working out? 
She was now I'd walk round and round the church. <laughs> Well, you, you mentioned people being late. This is a very funny moment from this morning with Gene Pitney, where Gene <laughs> Pitney was unbearably late. <laughs> Singing for you his latest hit, You're the Reason. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 All day long <laughs> And my thoughts you're deciding <laughs> Close my eyes and I know you'll be there Nice to know That you'll always be near me With your smile <laughs> And your love so dear Rather ironic line, close your eyes and you know I'll be there. Uh, yeah, that's, but I love the fact that he joined in with the dance moves before the words. Yeah, we, what was we, that? We don't know what he was doing there. I think he was doing the sort of international distress signal for I can't hear what I'm meant to be singing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's definitely going into Room 101. There's oh, no excellent. two ways about it. Um, yeah. I think, because it obviously means a great deal to you, this. Yeah, and, it does. Uh, and so we get rid of people ever being late again in your life. They're going into Room 101. Bye-bye. <laughs> Was that a symbolic joke? Yeah, or was that, that a was a symbolic was joke. It? He was fighting gravity to the end. Really? Uh, your next choice is in your drawer over there. Have a oh. look. Open your drawer. So far, you've had very... Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very popular choices. <laughs> now. I've told you once. <laughs> what does this represent? This is children in need. Not children in need. Okay. <laughs> Uh, just any of those telethons, you know, comic relief. Yeah. It, it just renders the whole sort of nation into a giant rag week. You know mm -hmm, what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's for, like, people who work in offices in banks and didn't go to university and they think they're missing out on something. You didn't. And it's like, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll, I'll, I'll dress up and walk backwards for the day. That'll make me into a colourful <laughs> character. No, it'll make you into a twat. <laughs> and I, oh, it's not... And also, there's these, oh, these comedians and actors who do such sincere things and they go out in Africa and they're... And it's like, do I really need Dawn French and Robbie Coltrane telling me there's not enough food? Why is that? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I just... Uh, once, right, this is a true story, I went to my bank once, it was about five or six years ago, it was actually comic relief, and they were all dressed up as Disney characters. Right? <laughs> and they're all having a whale of a time going, oh, we're mad, aren't we? Oh, don't know about Mickey, but hello! <laughs> but I was thinking, surely they've got to give someone, statistically, someone's going to get really bad news that day. Like, we've repossessed your house. Yeah. Or... <laughs> Sorry, Mr Wimbler, you're, 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 you're bankrupt. Yeah. You know what I mean? And oh, that's not going to sound good coming from Goofy, is it? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But you wouldn't get that on another sort of, you know... Do doctors do that? Do paramedics, you know? The Queen's Guard? No, they don't. Of course they don't. Just grow up. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a two-pronged thing here. It's, it's what the public do, the, you know, they embarrass themselves by, by joining in with all this sort of stuff. But you mentioned yeah. the, the quality of the entertainment as well. Well, that's, just, that's a bit of a problem, know, isn't it, when they're trying to fill ten hours' worth? Exactly. And it's like, you know, and they're doing their best, you know. I mean, Terry Wogan, bless him, but it's sort of like, they're, by the time I get in from the pub, yeah. it's sort of like the cast of a West End musical that's not selling. Yeah. And it's loads of ropey tarts in tights singing Cole Porter. You know what I mean? <laughs> ropey uh, tarts in tights singing sorry. Cole Porter. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I just, oh. Well, you'll be surprised how apt that is. Oh, great. I mean, let's just pick a piece of footage completely at random, <laughs> right? It's ropey tarts in tights. If this is not the embodiment of that phrase, <laughs> I shall give everybody in the audience five billion pounds. <laughs> Me, I, and oh. I, and I, and I, <laughs> but I do it.
Her gimmick is being kicked up the arse by the invisible man. <laughs> yeah. Either that or there's somebody in the front row with a very powerful vagina magnet. I mean, what... <laughs> I mean, what is going on? You don't see those anymore, Nobody. do you? No, you don't. They were, they, were, they were banned were they really? after the Second World War. Oh, that, oh, people, people were misusing them. W yeah, yeah. Women with coils were just flying across the street. Yeah. <laughs> Traffic accidents doubled. In I this. know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you, nobody what... would get paid for that, would they? But no. Because it's charity... Well, if she was a man, she would. Not in this country, but, you know, there's, there's, there's places you can go in the Far East and yeah. she can make a bit of money. Yeah. But that was like your mad aunt who'd forgotten her lithium. <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> Auntie, come on, it's the wedding. I don't need it. <laughs> 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 Oh, so, if we get rid of children in need, um, how are we going to, you know, because they, they, do, they do raise a lot of money, so what are we going to do? Get rid of children in need and comic relief, but still, you know, raise 30 million quid or whatever. How are we going to do that? Every um, celebrity that wants to get on children in need, you know, the cast of, I don't know... Pays. Um, pays to yeah, get on. Yeah, 40 quid. There you go. That's not a bad thought. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we can get rid of children in need, because, I mean, as I say, it does raise a lot of money, and... Sure. Um, I mean, I if, it means, if it means all we have to do in return is watch Leslie Joseph being kicked up the arse by the Invisible Man, is that really so bad? Oh, God, it's got to go in. I just, it's <laughs> gotta... <laughs> OK. Um, you're doing well. This illustrates your next choice. Have a look at this. Don Amos, king of caravans. You'd better get there quickly. He's tearing his caravan prices to shreds. Don Amos Mammoth Caravan Sale is now on at Hilton near Derby. Don Amos, king of caravans, the price is right and the choice is yours. I think that advert's deeply flawed. Why we should expect a lion to be recommending caravans... Exactly. It's not they, their territory. No, they, they, they kill and eat antelope. Yeah. And they're bloody good at it. Yeah. Mm. But what, what is this? What is this about? It's caravan holidays, mm -hmm. but very specific ones. The ones I went on from the age of seven <laughs> to twelve mm -hmm. in a two-birth in Bogner <laughs> with my mum and my nan. Party. <laughs> um, you have not known pleasure till you wake up in the middle of the night to the sound of your nan pissing in a tin bucket. <laughs> Isn't that a country and western song? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the only reason we went on that, well, uh, we were poor, mm. right? And I had like three older brothers and sisters, and so. We, we, all we could afford was like a week in Bogner. And the only reason we went on that is because someone who lived around the, the road had this two birth mm -hmm. uh, in this patch of grass called Riverside mm -hmm. in Bogner. Mm -hmm. right? I, I used to feel sorry for my older brothers and sisters because they couldn't come. They must have been killing themselves. <laughs> right? And my dad was going, Yeah, have a good time. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and my nan was deaf and I was an intolerant little brat and I, you know, I wouldn't bother sort of playing with them. And so I'd just be off, I'd just be out. All day. Like, my mum used to come back and go, he made about 90 friends. Of course I did. What was the alternative? I made friends with a crab for five days. <laughs> <laughs> True. And, and that was it. And there was a swimming pool and there was a clubhouse. And uh, What was going on in the clubhouse? Uh, often a girl-boy duo in blue satin called Joint Effort doing Mary Hopkins. <laughs> <laughs> Singing Mary Hopkins yeah. rather than doing <laughs> Mary Hopkins. <laughs> Those were the days. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, <laughs> well, perhaps what they should have done, perhaps they should have uh, booked a good song and dance act. A bit like, a bit like these. Yeah. Have a look at this. <laughs> Go on, hit me. You do. I won't hit you. You'd love that too. Also, it means that they don't hear. Tell them you're. David Bowie's nicked all your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about that. What was, what was your name? What was the name of the group? Shauna Dancing. Shauna Dancing? Yeah. 
<laughs> I know it's you and the blacksmith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you, Paul. So you don't want to tell us anything more about no. that? <laughs> um, let's have a look. We've got a map of Bognor. This is what it looks like. Probably very much. It hasn't, it's probably still a coastal town. Oh, yeah, town. yeah, that's Bognor, all right. Yep, that's there's, Bognor. There's the yeah, riverside. Riverside there, up there, So yeah. did you go to any of these places, or did you just stay in the confines um, of the... Uh... I'll have to... Uh... That's where I found the crab, just there. Right. <laughs> Shall I make a note of it, Yeah, then? And, I, and I put him back as well. Did you? Yeah, of course. Well, I'll he's here tonight. I used to... <laughs> 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 oh. I, I, well, I used to go off and I used to find little slugs and crabs and things. And um, my brother-in-law used to pick us up on the following Saturday and they used to spend the day with us and we used to go off. And I remember once um, uh, I, I found a, 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 a snake skin and I was teasing my sister with it. She was going, put it down, there's diseases on it. And my brother and I were sort of laughing. And I was teasing, she went, put it down, there's diseases, it, oh, it's poisonous and all that sort of. And I left it there, and um, I used to tell you know, people I'd tease her. And then uh, I remember I had some mates around when I was about 18, about 10 years later, and I was telling them how she was scared of snakes. And she chose then to tell me the truth. I'd been running around with a used condom. <laughs> Do a joke about sucking out the poison. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I've given away way too much to Yeah, you know, I'm amazed. Well, I think um, we can't undo the. You can't undo your childhood like that. You know, the, your, your nan pissing into a bucket is a is a memory which we all have now. Yeah. Um, all right, it's, I, I, I don't think I can put it in. I don't think okay. I can put it in because um, if you hadn't waved a condom which you thought was a snake, <laughs> and you hadn't ad adopted a, a crab for five days, then you wouldn't be the person you are now. So you'll have to take it away. You can't put caravans. Okay. They won't go in. Just think if they tuned in just then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on. Put <laughs> yeah. in your drawer. Okay, so right, we come to your last item. This is uh, represented by this uh, decapitated head. Do you want to uh, tell us what that represents? Uh, noisy people. Noisy people. This is the sort of thing we mean, a sort of noise from the nose. <laughs> There's another one. There's one there. <laughs> Whistling, of course. <laughs> well, it's, it's sort of unnecessary noises. It's uh -huh. my own psychosis and... Um, so you're not but, talking about people trapped in rubble? No, no, exactly, no. 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 <laughs> or having their legs sawn off, yeah. biting a bullet. They're yeah. allowed to be noisy. They're allowed to be noisy. Um, no, um, it's just... It's people who do this w w in a restaurant or walking along... <laughs> oh, see? Oh, God. No need to do it. That drives me mental. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Just whistling is... is you don't like whistling? Just so... Like Bill doesn't. <laughs> just so inane. What is that? And uh, I first noticed this in like um, changing rooms of like you know um, swimming baths. But every bloke there is whistling, going, <laughs> "I'm not gay. <laughs> I can't be looking at your packet because I'm concentrating on whistling. <laughs> I'm minding my own business." <laughs> I got it wrong. I wolf whistled. Um, but... <laughs> Could be taken the wrong way. And you don't want to be taken the wrong way. <laughs> I'm sorry. OK, so if whistling annoys you, um, yeah. how do you feel about this? We've got the king of all the whistlers, um, Roger Whittaker. This is from Jim Will Fix It. And the, the boy sitting next to him is there because he can't whistle. But uh, let's have a look at it, see, see how, what this does to you. Just whistle along. To do your best for it. One, two, three, two, two. I can't hear anything. Just try once more. I'll put my ear really close to you. What does that look like? What does that look like to the deaf? Just Roger Whitaker doing that to a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you don't mind your own whistling? Well, I don't. Because you do whistle it. quite well, actually. I have to say. Thanks very much. You've obviously done a lot of. You've spent your time in the swimming baths. <laughs> Yeah. Working out your alibi. Um, <laughs> so what sort of noises do you make that annoy you, then? Well, I don't make any noises that no. annoy me. 
because it, it's it's the rule of thumb. There are um, most there are annoying more annoying noises than whistling. I mean, one of the most annoying sounds any human being can make is "Hello, my name's Del Winton." I mean, exactly. That, <laughs> yeah. That's very annoying. I've got a very annoying noise. What's that? Ah! Yeah, that's quite annoying. <laughs> Was that the B side? <laughs> um, you see, noises, of course, are an important part of communication, aren't they? Um, especially if you're having an argument, uh, you can always use the, the well placed sigh in an argument. That's the one. Oh, I wasn't doing it. No. <laughs> you know, it's something, you know, or the muttering under your breath when you say, to, you know, well, uh, we're going to Bogner and that's it. Okay. Well, that's it. <laughs> yeah. So we just say, no, nothing, nothing. <laughs> and you can, you can keep, so you can use that to your advantage, can't you? you the can language sort of, of like, just grunts. Yeah. And, yeah. When the argument, you think the argument's over, and suddenly it's like, oh, yeah. like that, and then it starts up again. Oh, and just people who yawn too loudly because they're celebrating. They yawn. I go, oh, or slurp a cup of tea. I just, oh, God. Or people who or... sneeze twice and the second sneeze bears no relation to the first. Yeah, yeah, keep it consistent. You, you know yeah. that yeah, my, my wife Sarah does it. She does it on purpose. The first sneeze is like a pro all sneeze. Two. The second sneeze, two. Yeah. It's like, it, but it's... What you got, everyone knows how lovely it is to sneeze. Yeah. Right? So when you see someone going, just go, stop, 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 and they go, oh, you, f oh. <laughs> It really ruins their day. Yeah. Because they try and get it back and they go around looking at lights going, you know, going, what are you doing? Oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, how else would we know building work? How else would you know if your budget's gone way over, way over budget? How would you know that from the builders unless they sort of went, ooh, you know, you, these noises, they are, I mean, they, they're good for communication, I think, aren't they? Um, but it does, it is annoying. You, it, I mean, you really can, because you can't, you can't turn it off like, you can turn away from someone who looks offensive. Yeah. You know what I mean, <laughs> you can't sort of shut your ears, it's all, no. it's just there. Yeah. So it's, it's, oh, it's a terrible infringement. What about tapping freedom. the fingers and all that sort of stuff? Uh, anything I notice, if I'm, it doesn't matter what it is, if I notice something, that's it, it's the most annoying thing in the world. <laughs> so it's just, yeah. All right. Just... Well, on the basis of um, what you're saying. My madness. Uh, unnecessary noises, whistling. Extravagant sneezing. Uh, They're all going into room 101. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ricky Gervais. <laughs> well, I had to put your last choice in because um, if you don't stop human beings from making silly noises, uh, it ends up like this. So until the next time, good night. <laughs>